Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Uh, Mick here. Hello. So, um, you want a versatile overdrive pedal. You do. <laughs> Some have come out just recently. Um, you'll know from the title that we're talking about the Flat 5, the collaboration between Josh Smith, our good friend Josh Smith, and uh, Polly FX. We've long been fans. Mm -hmm. Of the automaton, the tomato tone. Yes. Uh, Mark II preamp from Chase Bliss. Is it called a preamp? Was it yeah, called an overdrive? It's a preamp Mark II. It's an overdrive. It's an overdrive yeah. pedal. Yeah, yeah. And the Kernan Ridge, all of which offer this uh, incredible functionality that's based on multiple amounts of gain, volume, and EQ, uh, different types of clipping diodes, mm. or at least different types of clipping function, and just a wealth of uh, incredible sounds. In addition, they are all MIDI-able. That's right. You can, once you've found a sound that you like, you can store that and access it via M1D1 yeah. as a preset. That's MIDI. We're just taking the mic. Yeah, like thanks. That? Like that? Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> we're not doing any M1D1 today. Um, it, we're just concentrating on the sounds of the pedals. And it's fair to say, if you want an in-depth demo of any of these pedals, you, we've done them. Uh, we've done it on the Mark II. We did a kind of one on the Kernan Ridge. We're not going to do one on the Poly because it's wow, it is. It's proper. Go and watch Sean Tubbs's uh, watch Josh's own demo mm. to get an absolutely in-depth uh, look around what it can do. What we're going to do today is focus on some core sounds. Yeah. See how easy they are to dial in. Um, do some compare and contrast. And just for the halibut, Dan and I have picked a pedal each. Um, which we like the sound of as a sort of core overdrive tone, just for a bit of context. Yeah, exactly. The the poly um, is, is really interesting in that there are two sides to it. One side is the side that chooses the clipping diodes, which is side A. That side. That side. And the other side, side B, is, a, is like a preamp side that has uh, JFETs in there that basically does the, the like a preampy type job. Yeah, it's supposed to be more like an amp, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, you've yeah. got JFETs doing the job of cascaded uh, valves that you would get in an amp amplifier. Um, and you can stack them in either direction. Exactly. And so, the, the JFET side's also got filters. Um, so instead of your standard <laughs> treble, it's, I mean, it's it's more like a modular synth. Come really. on, then. let's go, let's go. Right. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn the poly on and without trying to explain too much, demonstrate some of the crazy noises you can get out of it. Okay. Dan, go. <laughs> Bye. 
I was just tapping and pressing come the end. Yeah. And sorry if you were looking at the back of my head for a bit of that. Low and high pass filters. Yes. Each of which you can set for the kind of cutoff point at both uh, low and high frequency. Plus you can change the resonance of each of those. Yeah. Low and high frequencies. Yes. And then you can then you can attach a. Uh, it's got a an built an oscillator that you can attach a, a sine wave to it and take any of those functions and, I mean it's it is full yeah. on. So we're not going to get into all of that. But that just a quick overview of just how vast. And just think about what happens if you attach an expression pedal via MIDI to change some of those things. Yeah, you've it, got pseudo wah wah sounds. You've got into vibes with the tremolo pulses. Yep, harmonic trims and yeah, it's it's. Pretty amazing. And as we say, if you want to delve deeper into that, watch some full-blown demos on it. Yeah. Perhaps a good place to start would be in the presets. So if you look on the top there, one, two, three, four, five, six, each of those is one of Josh's presets, right? Yes. There are six banks, and each bank has six presets. How do you know what bank you're in just out of interest? Uh, I think that's a, that's a fun question, Michael. That's a very fun question. Yeah. We have... Yeah, we, we've... Dan and I have had a conversation about the UI. It obviously makes sense to um, Josh. Yes. <laughs> and Loki. Yeah. It's really funny. We got the um, the envelope through with the, uh, the description and, and it said, G'day. And I thought, oh, he's done a very personal thing. No, Loki's Australian. Of course he is. From Melbourne. <laughs> so, yes. So he is, must be, therefore, an absolute legend. <laughs> and a lot of it's colour. Yeah. And, you know putting your finger on the things and sliding them up and down is pretty logical, but I think it does take a minute. In addition, in each preset, by tapping the signature button, you've got access. B's got to be on. Yeah. Oh. You get access to two sets of controls within each preset. Mm -hmm. So if your head is spinning now, join the club, mine is two. I'd need a week with it before it started yeah. to make sense. But yeah. I think maybe we could start with some presets and change. Change a few things. Yeah. So Josh's preset number one yep. replaces his old pedal. And yeah. his old pedal was? His old pedal was his Chula. Yeah. Now, this is a, it's just, we've got side A on here, and that just turns on the Shockey diode. So you've got a selection of four different diodes there, Shockey diode, germanium, uh, silicon, and an LED. And they're all just different forward voltages and different characters and stuff. Well remembered, mate. That's all right. I'm, yeah. Well, the symbols are on there, so it makes so you know bit, what they are. That's a bit easier. <laughs> um, but one of the things about that pedal that Josh had before it was a very simple, really open sounding thing, which is basically the tone I started off at, at that jam was just going through that A side, which is just that shocky diode. Let's hear everything it else is bypassed. Let's hear it. And um, you got the telly. I'll do some humbuckers. Uh, here's here are the amps. We're using a. 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue and the PRS HDRX20 for a little bit of martial flavour. And they're both like this. Nice. <laughs> I will tune this guitar in a minute. Come on then. I'll just say, for me, that's enough. <laughs> that sound is Wonderful. And that I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Don't cut me in. I think that it sounds amazing. It's just adding a bit on the top, it's isn't it? It's just adding a little it's not colouring anything. It just adds a little bit of grit, which is really cool. Yeah, uh tuning the SG is gonna take too long, so let's uh, do this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sounds great. If you know Josh is playing, substitute us for him, add 13s, the right hand of a Titan. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, and the left hand of a Titan, to be fair. Um, it's that push that, that, to be fair, some people found that tough with the Chula. Okay. Because you've got to play it. You, yeah. You and do. it needs to be hitting an amp that's just... Yeah. In order to... But you get that spiky in the treble. Yeah. Um, nice. And then when we add B to that... Here you go, mate. What I love about that, there's no... I've been moaning recently that ordinary overdrive pedals have been leaving me a bit cold. Okay. Because they can be a bit compressed and yeah. a bit small. And that is the absolute opposite of it that, really isn't is. it? It's extended. Yeah. It's yeah, there's, there's not high gain, even though there's plenty of gain going on. No. And there's, there's nothing... It's not, it's not trying to compress anything to make you feel comfortable. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. no, no, this is... Really open and really raw. It's really great. Okay, let's see how close we can get to that then with the uh, with the Mark II, shall we? Okay. Uh, so let's remind ourselves of this. It's not far off. Yeah, mids are a different place, and there's a bit of a different extended uh, top, end, top end of the poly, but the aggression's all there. Yeah, I mean you can change that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't start diving into the EQ because we could be there all week. But just quickly, one of the discussions around all of these pedals, if you're looking for versatility, is UI, right? Yeah, it's so important. And for me, the the the, the simplicity. The WYSIWYG nature of the Mark II. Yeah, you can see everything. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing um, underneath in different sets of LEDs or anything. Now, that might mean that ultimately it can do slightly less because you don't have that infinite control over everything. Mm. But it's a big part of the discussion. Okay, and then let's see where we get to with the Kernum then. I've just realized I don't understand what any of the controls do. Okay. So the pre-tone is pre the clipping stage, mm -hmm. how bright it is. Yep. Presumably, let's just hear that a sec. <laughs> 
So they're like tilt controls. Seems that side. way. It also feels like the mid is in quite a different place from the get-go. Right. Uh, and then obviously the clipping characteristic. In order to match the mids on this, keep going. <laughs> I'm misunderstanding something. I, there's, I can't find a bass control. Okay. Because scooping the mids out is also losing a lot of bottom end. Right. See if you can get any closer. Okay. <laughs> More tweaking. Endless tweaking. Yeah. 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 Alright. Let's go for a completely different sound. Yep. Dial up something on the hotcake you love then. Okay. Here you go. that much drive on it in this scenario where the amps are really pushed yeah that's all i'll use oh uh, no way yeah okay oh i love that i love that just from that little it's just of... it's pretty similar to what we were doing before but that's cool yeah that's cool. there's a sizzle to it that i just really really dig yeah okay um Well done, mate. Not a million miles no, off. great. I started by trying to get more bass out of the poly, but the um, high pass filter was already in its minimum position. Yeah. So there wasn't going to be any more bass coming through. So I tried one of the other diodes, because having just listened to them a couple minutes ago, <laughs> uh, it was clear that the low end response was different yeah. in, the, in the different diodes. Yeah. Pulled the gain back a bit. That was... Pretty close. Yes, I thought it was great. Pretty close. I yeah. wonder how we can get with the automaton now. Keep going.
There you go. That's very good. Not a million miles no. off. And again, one of the interesting things is you get into those diodes and the pre and the post EQ and the difference it makes is staggering. Indeed. Uh, not, and this is, this is a really important thing with these things, it's not, uh, the EQ the power is huge, but being able to choose the diodes and the way that the, the gain works uh, has so much, um, the, the way it interacts with the guitar is so important and it makes such a massive difference. And that's one of the power of these pedals that you can change that gain structure, change the way it interacts with the guitar. <laughs> By having this much versatility, it enables you to have superpower over this, the bit that you want. Yeah, totally. Isn't it? Yeah. Because you're not going to, chances are you might not use the full gamut of sounds, but mm. by packing it all in there, mm. they used to say that about Mesa amps back in the day, you know, super complicated with millions of controls. Right. But the point was, it was all there so you could get to where you needed to yeah. be, yeah, yeah. even though the outskirts of, of that versatility was perhaps not that usable. Sure. All right, Curlum then, let's see if I can... I am struggling with the kernel, I'm sorry, because I don't That's right. no, well, I, I don't really know understand. Bring a sound up on the tilt and no, I'm gonna have a go on the kernel. Let's let's come on. Let's, All let's, right. let's finish it off. All right. Come on and let me hear it again. <laughs> Pretty good. Getting there. Yeah. So again, it's all about getting that clipping. Because what you might think is higher gain is actually harder clipping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Definitely. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay. I'm going to dial something up on the tilt, which is like a smoother overdrive. So everything we've heard so far is quite, um, got plenty of edge to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Which, and which is the sounds that I like. Josh approved. Have, exactly. Those Telecaster, wah, right on the, right on the front of the note. So I'll, um, I'll dial something a little smoother up on the tilt, which might for many people be sort of, uh, I don't know, for want of a better word, friendlier. Sure. Okay. Overdrive territory. Let's see if I can manage that. Sorry, if I'm red in the face, it's flipping boiling in here today. It's lovely. It's really nice. I'm home again. <laughs>
Ballpark. Lost. Are you Ballpark. lost on the controls? Uh, it's well, no, uh, a little bit, but trying to because there's a presence to the tilt that I'm finding really hard to. Um, it's either all the way up and it's too much. I'm trying to dial it back just a hair. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's in the ballpark. Let me try the Mark II. Okay. <laughs> I'm bored now. So, yeah, struggling a little bit to nail it. And that's uh, ballparkish, but you know. Um, but I want to quickly try the Kernum. See if I can. There's a, the tilt, there's something unique going on in there in that game structure. It's really nice. Yeah, we're on. Uh, we're also on the half tilt mode, but it's not. It's tilted back a little bit, cutting a bit of bass, but not a huge amount. I've had to dial out like all the bass there yeah. in that mark too. Okay, and last one, let's try and get the Kernum. <laughs> Yeah, I right. found it easier to dial on the, on the Kernum than um, the, the Mark II seems to have a lot of bottom end. Yeah, always found that. Yeah. Always found that. I wonder yeah. how much of that is on the mid control as well. Yeah, sure. But it, it goes back to any of these sounds that you like, you can say, I like that, store it yeah. and have that as a sound and then dial up something else. Okay, so we know they do, you know, what, what have we done there? We've done... Fairly, you know, boosty, overdrivey, aggressive -y, toppy, mm -hmm. that thing that, that Josh really likes. Yep, yep. We've covered a bit of mid-gain stuff. Yep. Um, should we ever listen to some, just like a nice boost? Yeah. Like a nice low gain yeah. type thing. Okay. Uh, here you go, then. <laughs> So for me, that's too aggressive for a nice boost. Okay. Nice round boost. There's nothing round about it. Right. Yeah. Do you agree or not really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see if we can just invoke the B side. Turn the gain down. See what happens. I don't know if I'm... See, one thing is I don't know what I'm altering here. So give it a go.
Yeah, we're, we're at cross purposes. Um, I think that is part of the UI because it's obviously it's in there, but it's like, oh, yeah, that's just the B side on, so that's just the preamp side on. The, the input gain is barely on. Full volume. And the, yeah, right. Yeah. I think in order to get, sorry, I, I probably didn't explain myself, Dan, but I was thinking more like a, like a boosty, like a clean thing. Okay. But which would require less right hand, I think. Right. Um, so yeah, that's just. The other thing I'm struggling with, I don't know whether I'm in the B set of controls or the A set of controls. Okay. So basically in order to turn the volume down, look, you've got to go there, but it's still blue. Okay. So I don't know if I'm, I think I if don't the, know if I'm misunderstanding If the something. volume's lit up, then you're in the volume side. If you hit the volume's not on, then you're in the... Oh, okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so it might be that we do invoke a bit of side A and just lean back on the guitar a bit. Okay, true story. Um, we just got completely confused with the controls. Um, and that's that. Okay. Just can you play for a minute, and I'm just going to see if I can get a clean okay. thing. Right, like, like for 30 seconds. Sorry, we got there in the end. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of tap, plenty of volume on tap from each of them in the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, I think we're up towards the end of it there on the poly. The Mark II's got uh, so oops much. To so go. much. Yeah, yeah. And the Kerm feels like it's got a fair bit to go as well. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe that's the subject for another discussion another day. Indeed. We didn't get into all the other stuff the poly does. The trem. It. Yeah, all, it's getting, remarkable. There's loads of demos. As I said, go and check those out. And um, getting into the filters, which you can start getting fuzzy with it. Yeah, yeah. Which we know the Mark II does really well, does fuzzies really well. Yep. Super interesting. It is. Certainly sounds, uh, in Josh's words, ruling. Ruling. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, uh, loads in it, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Really inspiring. I mean, awesome work, guys. That's, you know, yeah. Really Let us great. know what you think. Let us know what you think about multi-do-it-all pedals. Are you interested in that or do you just want the thing that you know that you can get to quickly? Yeah, yeah. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, well, if you remember the, do you remember the, the TC Nova drive back yeah. in the day, like ages ago, and that was a that was a controllable analog overdrive. And I was like, yeah, it had a sound to it 
you know, and it was, but it was like the same idea. Um, so the idea has been around for a while, but I think, you know, the brothers from, um, from uh, Chase Bliss, you know, that idea of digitally controlled analog, it's great. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. A massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab some merch. Please buy some merch and please go to thatpedalshop.com in the US and uh, look for some pedals if you're interested. Uh, those are the two ways we fund the show, but predominantly the merch. Please buy merch. Yes. Please, please buy merch. Uh, <laughs> thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK is... And it says Music of Guildford in Surrey where you can probably buy all of this stuff. And our blinking good buddy, Aussie, <laughs> you beauty bonza mate in Australia, Matt. <laughs> yes, thank you. Matt from Pedal Empire and the gang at Pedal Empire. Uh, please go to that pedalshop.com in the US. Please go to that pedal show store, buy some merch. Uh, merch, yup, and uh, we shall be happy. Fabulate. Thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Um, uh, we have every Monday, we've got the VCQs. You get that as a podcast. And we also have monthly pedal giveaways for our patrons. Patreon.com slash that pedal show. Great. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.